after this webinar is uh, uh, going to follow our uh, webinar on digital health and uh, be part of our series on digital health. Uh, this time uh, we have the pleasure to welcome uh, UNICEF Geospatial Health Lead, uh, Mr. Rocco Pansiera. Uh, and uh, Rocco will be joined uh, with uh, two of his colleagues, uh, Chisenga Abel Mosoka uh, and Naimio Tu, um, respectively from uh, Zambia. And uh, uh, Nai is uh, now based in Papua New Guinea uh, and he used to be in Juba. Um, so uh, they are going to be presenting uh, the uh, GIS micro planning and uh, um, COVID delivery support in LAC. Um, the reason uh, why we're doing this webinar a bit early, because uh, those of you who are used to joining us know that we generally uh, have these webinars at the end of the month, uh, but uh, we have uh, uh, some deadline coming uh, with the Gavi CDS needs based funding, uh, the round three that is coming at the end of this month. So we decided to do this a little bit in uh, advance and also uh, talk about um, uh, UNICEF guidance in incorporating digital uh, health solution uh, and uh, especially in this case uh, GIS and macro planning. Um, so um, this webinar to conclude is part of our knowledge uh, management and sharing action uh, in this region, Latin America and Caribbean. Uh, and at the same time, we have also knowledge uh, management products that we're frequently sharing with you. So I see uh, a bunch of familiar faces uh, that I'm very glad are making the time in their busy schedule to join this call. And without further ado, uh, I'll pass the floor on to Roko uh, to take us through. Uh, thank you again, Roko. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, colleagues. I hope you can all hear me well. Uh, my name is Rocco Pansera, and I'm the Geospatial Health Specialist in the UNICEF Health Section in New York, and I coordinate uh, UNICEF global support related to the use of geospatial data and technologies for, for health programs. It's my pleasure today to lead you through a short webinar on the topic of uh, GIS microplanning for COVID, COVID delivery support. Um, I will start today with a, a very brief overview of the global support around which UNICEF and COVAX partners, especially WHO, are coordinating and providing support globally in the area of digital health and specifically geospatial solutions. Uh, I will then provide a brief introduction on the use of GIS for immunization microplanning and the requirements for deployment of these solutions in countries uh, and discuss a guidance uh, that we have produced uh, to support countries in the inclusion of uh, uh, funding requests in the Gavi CDS uh, third window related to geospatial investments. And we'll then have two uh, presentations on application of GIS for microplanning, uh, one from UNICEF in Myanmar on microplanning for EPI, and one more recent uh, in Zambia on uh, application of GIS for uh, COVID-19 to give you a bit of an overview of the um, uh, practicalities of implementation on the ground. So global support for deployment of digital health solutions, including just spatial solutions for COVID-19 vaccines, is coordinated through the Digital Health Center of Excellence, uh, the DICE, which you might have heard of before. Uh, DICE is a multi-agency consortium co-led by UNICEF and the WHO, established in 2021 as the sort of field-facing support mechanisms for UNICEF Digital Health and Information System Unit. Uh, DICE works to improve donor coordination and provide targeted technical assistance to countries. At the global level, uh, DICE works mainly to coordinate and align donors and implementing partners' investments around a common digital health approach and standardized digital solutions. While at the country level, uh, DICE works through uh, existing UNICEF and WHO regional and country structures to support countries increasing their capacity to identify, develop, and scale uh, digital solutions. More specifically, um, at the country level, 
that supports the establishment on uh, well integrated uh, digital and geospatial health solutions in a number of ways. We support concept notes, terms of references, business requirements and funding proposals. Uh, we provide guidance and support implementation of assessment tools for mapping the digital ecosystem and ensuring that digital solutions are embedded in a adequate digital ecosystems. We advise on existing digital global goods uh, and including existing evidence and plans to scale and institutionalize. Uh, and finally, we provide um, recommendations and support in contracting technical experts and partners and support capacity building uh, effort. When it comes to uh, support specifically related to geospatial data and technologies, uh, DICE relies on the coordination of the WHO and UNICEF COVAX GIS Working Group. The COVAX GIS Working Group is a global level coordination effort uh, to streamline and coordinate geospatial services and data offerings for countries that are seeking such resources for COVAX. Uh, since 2020, the group has been providing guidance to country with support in a number of areas, uh, including uh, supporting fundraising for GIS investments, for example, through dissemination activities such as this webinar. Uh, we've been providing guidance on assessing the enabling environment to ensure sustainable deployment of geospatial solutions in country information systems. We provide support in contracting GIS technical experts and partners, uh, provide guidance on and tools for planning, for costing, and we provide technical assistance for implementation of GIS solutions. The support is provided through a series of tools that are linked here, as well as uh, bilateral or bilateral supports uh, directly uh, uh, with countries to a certain extent. So one of the core areas of support uh, in the context of COVAX has been that of the use of GIS for immunization microplanning, which is recognized as a uh, uh, potential game changing application of geospatial solutions to support COVID-19 uh, and in particular to support the identification of target populations and the optimization of service delivery uh, vaccine uh, service delivery. Uh, as you probably know well, microplanning is a, a sequence of steps for planning and monitoring the delivery of health services from the health facility to the community level. Uh, the microplanning cycle goes from the identification of target population to the optimization of service delivery strategies and includes the management of resources and supplies uh, and the uh, uh, reporting of uh, um, the outcomes of uh, uh, vaccine delivery uh, to uh, a higher level at the district and back into the health information systems. There are a number of opportunities for digitization along this cycle, uh, and uh, we're not discussing all of them today, but the use of GIS in this cycle is generally linked to the steps that are related to the planning phase, where the target population is located, operational maps of the catchment areas are drawn, and service delivery strategies are optimized using geospatial data and geospatial analysis to ensure all target populations receive uh, services. So at its core, uh, GIS-based microplanning involves the use of spatial information on on a number of source on a number of um, um, spatial information on a number of core um, uh, information needs: the population distributions, the location of health infrastructures, and geographic information on the connecting environment, uh, the road transportation networks, the geographic barriers, the water bodies, everything that represents and has an impact on the movement of goods and populations to health facilities and to communities. Um, this uh, support that can support decision makers involved in microplanning doing a number of things. For example, 
Uh, it can support the marketing accurate catchment areas of health facilities, locating the target population, which is within specific health facilities catchment areas, and optimizing the um, delineation of catchment area so that there is no overlap and that population is being served in the most uh, optimal way. Uh, it allows to assess uh, target population, the coverage of the target population that fixed vaccination sites provides and identify areas that will require outreach or mobile strategies due to their accessibility characteristics. Uh, and finally, can also optimize the location of service points to ensure equitable access or the location of additional service points uh, uh, where to serve communities that might be out of reach from a fixed site. Uh, and it also supports the planning and logistics for mobile and outreach activities. So the, the application of spatial information to the microplanning process, uh, as you will see also in uh, the use cases we'll present later, has demonstrated in a number of country applications some clear benefits with respect to the traditional use of paper-based hand-drawn maps or sketches, which is generally the common way to go about microplanning. It has been shown that the process can improve microplanning in a number of ways. Uh, most remote and vulnerable populations can be accounted for in microplans. Uh, population estimates from satellite imagery can be an operational alternative where uh, uh, census data are out of date. Uh, spatial analysis can reveal gaps in services and communities lacking timely access to vaccination sites, and these service gaps can be reduced by uh, deploying outreach vaccination sites and mobile clinics in the specific areas where population is lacking uh, access. And finally, the availability of accurate GIS maps uh, we have seen um, uh, strengthen accountability of the microplanning process at multiple level uh, of the decision making process by providing more evidence of what is happening at the uh, uh, frontline uh, level of uh, uh, delivery. Now, uh, given that microplanning is a process that extends across multiple levels of the Ministry of Health, the path to sustainable deployment of GIS solutions uh, necessarily requires a, a holistic integration with various actors in the MOH. In general, the sustainable implementation um, for, of GIS for any health programs will benefit from the establishment of a suitable enabling environment for GIS, or what we, what we also refer to as the geo-enabling environment, which is a set of elements, political, strategic, uh, capacity, um, and so on, that are needs to be in place um, uh, in, in the ministry or through partners to be able to sustain at the country level this deployment. A number of principles have emerged based on past experience to make this process successful. Um, First of all, the process benefits from being aligned with the country GIS context and the existing capacity in the Ministry of Health or related agencies that sometimes are have the mandate on geospatial data management for the country. Uh, Ministry of Health ownership can be enhanced through the establishment of a governance structure for uh, GIS uh, assets and matters. Uh, the cycle of geospatial data collection, management and update is more sustainable if integrated into Ministry of Health functions or related agency, governmental agencies. And yet uptake of GIS products, especially at the front line, needs to be ensured through participatory involvement of the frontline health staff, for example, in the data collection and in the map production process. These elements are quite crucial to be able to ensure scalability and sustainability uh, of the deployment. So to conclude this overview, I would like to provide a quick roadmap of where country could start when thinking about implementing GIS-based microplans. First, to identify uh, if and how GIS is the solution to address bottlenecks experienced in the in the immunization programs and where is other solutions might be more important or priorities. 
Uh, second step will be to assess the current enabling environment for GIS to identify existing gaps in core GIS data sets, technologies or technical capacities, as discussed before, that might hinder the implementations. There are existing resources for this process uh, that are copied on the right here and, up, and support is available through the eyes for the assessment. And then depending on the outcome of the assessments, either plan for implementation of GIS based micro planning, typically through a file of phase and in parallel ensure that the enabling environment is strengthened the weakest elements are strengthened through uh, to ensure sustainability or in a case where there might be gaps in the enabling environment the suggestion is to focus on establishing a plan to build the core elements of the enabling environment and then plan for implementation of a pilot phase to stimulate Ministry of Health engagement and coordination and mobilization. As I mentioned, support is available through both guidances and 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 dice uh, as well. Um, I would like now to quickly notify you of a short guidance that we have compiled to support countries in the inclusions of GIS in the Gavi COVID-19 delivery support funding proposals. Uh, as you're probably aware, countries can use the Gavi CDS funding to support planning, vaccine delivery and monitoring activities where these activities are aligned with the priorities identified in the national uh, deployment and vaccination plan. Gavi C3DS windows has a focus on on three key objectives and specifically in the integration of COVID-19 and routine in the routine immunization to achieve sustainable benefits. Geospatial innovation is eligible for Gavi CDS funding and countries are in fact encouraged to include innovations in innovative activities that support COVID-19 uh, vaccine delivery. Uh, there, there's been strong interest for many countries in the inclusion of GIS solutions in the application for Gavi funding and to facilitate this process, um, the GIS working group has released an information note which is available here uh, in the, uh, the links here at the bottom and we will distribute for sure. Um, and has the main objective to support countries in the application process for CDS. Uh, the document is intended for immunization planners, managers and other stakeholders involved in the application and it provides uh, practical information that they can use to uh, first of all identify the GIS investments that are relevant to specific programmatic gaps in the uh, NDVP eligible areas to formulate an applica uh, a narrative on how these investments will address the uh, uh, programmatic gaps. And finally, it supports the formulation of a sound budget by providing a list of cost items that need to be considered for each uh, investment. And the, the table on the right here shows just an example, an extract from the uh, guidance on how to guide that, how uh, we guide identification of GS investments relevant to each programmatic area. Uh, the guidance is available again at this link. Uh, uh, please do uh, uh, access it if you're interested. So this concludes my introduction. I will now pass hand it over to Dr. Naimio Tu, who is an immunization specialist from UNICEF in Papua New Guinea. Uh, he worked with UNICEF South Sudan for two years as immunization supply chain specialist and um, uh, also with UNICEF Myanmar as health specialist for immunization programs. Uh, I will hand it over to Ney for um, his presentations. Uh, thank you very much, Rocco and colleagues. Good morning, good afternoon and good night. For me, it's uh, 1 a.m. in the morning from PNG, so my morning greeting to all of you. I'm very happy to share uh, some of the experiences uh, utilizing these geospatial tools to strengthen immunization micro planning back in 2018 and 19. Uh, even though it is it, it is a little bit uh, uh, two to three years old, uh, older, I mean, practically, but uh, that was the time where we started that, uh, that initiative as in the first cohort. So uh, we observed uh, some of these uh, activities and uh, findings are relevant to share that's why i'm very happy to share my experiences and to to discuss further uh, next slide please yes um 
in this uh, uh, discussion or around ten minutes, uh, we will I will be uh, discussing with you about uh, what are the challenges for the what were the challenges for the immunization program at the time in 2018 in Myanmar, and what were the you know how do we end it with use uh, with utilizing the uh, geospatial information system to address those challenges and. What were the processes uh, we uh, uh, practiced to deploy the GIS tool for the micro planning in immunization? Uh, what were the immediate and the long term effect to the micro planning practices by utilizing this GIS tool? Um, here, I will not, we will not, we will not further discuss in very long outcome process, but at least what were the immediate and the long term impact to the uh, effect to the micro planning processes. Uh, in the uh, in the country and what were the potential for the future rules, future use and application within the immunization and beyond the immunization system and um, uh, to the health uh, overall health system. And also it was also good to note what were the what were what were the challenges to expand to largest use as a national skill and maybe some of the area which is very sensitive to uh, applying this GIS technology because of the political or the military uh, uh, sensitivities. And at the time, what were the way forward? What were the thought? Maybe I will also uh, add some of the later uh, latest technology that is currently being, you know, uh, evolved. Even though I may not add as a uh, detailed discussion, but that will be uh, also discussed. Next slide, please. Yeah, so in the year 2017, 18 and 19, um, the immunization program in Myanmar, not comparable to the current situation where we have a very uh, difficult situation right now in the country. But at the time, the immunization coverage was stagnant around between 80 and 90 percent. Still, the, the, the last mine children around 10 to 50 percent were missed in every year. And from the different review and the study, it was shown that those this those are from the population which is uh, beyond the uh, normal reach or regular programming. So, but, but uh, those were characterized characterized by uh, a special population like socially hard to reach. They know a health worker know where are the where this population is it, but they don't know exactly where they are. Um, uh, especially like a displayed peri urban slant dweller. Uh, maybe some of these contests might be uh, similar across, you know, uh, Latin America region because I also noticed some of these ch uh, challenges or maybe uh, uh, living style uh, uh, a little bit similar in that context because of nature of the south to south. Uh, so uh, the, the main problem was those populations exit and health worker realized, but there is no evidence or no systematic approach to understand where are those population and how to incorporate them in the micro plan. Next slide, please. So, you know, we the, the country was utilizing a different method or maybe traditional way to improve by improving the micro planning, utilizing the traditional way of uh, a very effective but traditional way of uh, applying these uh, micro planning processes or maybe uh, uh, increasing the supervision and monitoring, investing in more resources like uh, coaching. However, uh, among these others, uh, uh, others uh, uh, solution, uh, we learned that there is some possibility to understand better about the population and health facility. Uh, where where are the health facility? Who are they serving? Who is missing? So this type of this sort of uh, information we receive from our uh, our uh, our headquarter and, and, and from the GIS uh, group. So we were uh, interested. OK, why don't we apply uh, in the micro planning? Because uh, in the micro planning is key uh, to, to to help the problem in Myanmar at the time, because the problem was how people plan to reach those uh, difficult or maybe last mine population. So as Rocco also mentioned in his uh, previous slide, normally we use hand drawn hand dry or maybe the sketch match where we do not have a, a better information for the supervisor unless they go and they reach everywhere 
which is not possible in the resource constraint situation for the supervisor and for the national level planner or the state level planner to reach everywhere to understand their plan. So uh, the GIS came in a, a, a role to understand those populations. So at the time, uh, the GIS uh, information were available, but the uh, and there may not be those information were not up to date and when, are not according to the need for the health worker or the for the immunization program to develop the micro plan. So, so the the based on the uh, the workshop and the brainstorm exercise, uh, we we ended okay to understand uh, the populations and the characteristic of the population and also health facility distribution. Uh, that is in the context of Myanmar. So, uh, the the group decided okay. We try to define the population by naming them as an EPI community because whenever there are people, there may be children. Uh, whenever there is a children, there is an interest for the immunization program. So we name them as an immunization EPI community. So any places where people are living, they were defined in different, you know, uh, characteristics, and uh, that's at the basis where GI do special information for those communities start to apply. Uh, start to call it. Thank, uh, next, next slide, please. So, uh, different processes involved to uh, uh, to understand the facility communities, which are very uh, basic for the micro plant uh, to, to 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 guide the appropriate strategies, including all the topography and the uh, uh, the modal modal transport and the barriers, physical and the other barriers. So, uh, what uh, as a first step. You know, uh, that was the method used to, in 2018 and 19. So the SOP for data collection for the communities and uh, facilities and boundaries that were developed and all the information were collected by the health worker by visiting those locations. So, so that was one of the, uh, the tedious staff health worker to go everywhere to collect, to understand the, those locations. Um, after that, uh, the old communities boundary and health facility boundary were, you know, developed in in consultation with all the health worker. You will see some of the picture and activity that involvement of the frontline health worker in this process. And then, based on all the basic information collected, and also with the uh, uh, the information from the. Um, um, available GIS map as well as involvement of the volunteer group to understand better non health facility or non community structure other other you know viable structure that were developed and that finally led, led to uh, creation of the GIS based map first of all we started with the PDF or maybe paper based map that were translated into some of the benign shape and we trying to work with the health worker to understand and then train them how to use, interpret the map and link with their micro planning. So that was the processes involved and most of the processes we ran through the Ministry of Health staff uh, with the support of UNICEF staff and consultant and that was tedious and it took time and for pilot we started have we started with the different processes of pilot, extended pilot, and national rollout so that we have kept it because we use the naive health worker to start to understand and uh, involve in the process. So the process took almost six months, minimum six months to have one round of data collection and, uh, and uh, availability of the micro planning map and the training and utilization. Next slide, please. So uh, throughout this process, uh, we learned and we, we get some of the good benefits uh, from these uh, processes or the micro planning. So, uh, you know, previously those community that were in the different uh, 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 condition or characteristic, we, which were not known to the health worker or not known to the planner, were defined, well defined, and and, and also matched with the health facility distribution plan. In one instance, uh, some of the migrant settlement were identified. That settlement, the health worker no, but it was not visible for the planner or the monitor or the health or head manager to incorporate into the micro plan or to make sure that these people population are part of the micro plan. They serve uh, that was improved because you know uh, in the context of the the country, those migrant population might be true in in your context also, 
they are not registered and they are not uh, you know uh, officially registered or recognized and the health workers sometimes miss them so this type of uh, 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 SSI help a lot to identify and to make sure they are planned and they were reach so those boundaries and also health facility distribution sometimes it is out of date out of date or maybe the health facility were organized and and, uh, and distributed to the population according to the uh, a very outdated structure and the, with the expansion of the urban population or maybe semi-urban population, the health worker, health facility and population set a ratio that will not match or incorporate where any define and we're able to uh, propose to do immediate changes. That is beyond the EPI and that health system also pick up that information and they were able to advise in the health facility planning. Um, also, the, the immunization posts and the population, the, those information were reflected and reviewed by the health worker. They realized themselves and they immediately start to uh, adjust their micro plan, actually vaccination posts and size and frequency. So this type of media benefit we, we, we observed from this micro planning process. Even before we started, uh, we, we, even before we start to apply and see the you know, actual outcome, but we start to see in the planning the, the processes were more uh, effective and also the plan became more uh, more, more, uh, more more accurate to to, to address the uh, actual challenges and so I did that I I, I have captured some of the long term uh, long term uh, uh, plan a uh, long term effect number one you know when we developed the uh, this GIS process at the same time we were also working on the in revision of the micro plan so we were we were able to incorporate some of these you know finding and a positive uh, uh, outcome into the micro planning guidance so that uh, the the micro plan new micro plan guideline capture those uh, positive and, and good practices from this GIM based micro planning process and it were incorporated into uh, maybe proper identification of the population targeting session planning that were uh, communicated and articulated in the micro plan that was a good and long term uh, effort. And the last one was, uh, you know, we use, I, I mentioned before, we use mostly the Ministry of Health staff taking the time, sensitizing this, the people, uh, uh, the health worker and uh, the planner and the manager to this uh, jazz technology and its benefits. So that create a sense of uh, uh, ownership and capacity and accountability that improve in the in uh, somehow it found a basis for improvement in the in the in the uh, within the health system. Next slide, please. Uh, this is my uh, uh, less uh, uh, almost last uh, slide, second last slide. So we also noticed that challenges I explained before. Uh, it, it was uh, in 2018-19. It was a new concept. Uh, to apply this GIS in the micro plan, it took time for us to really and uh, understand for even for ourselves how to link with the micro plan and then the, this GIS technology. And also uh, it involved TTA processes to collect the data, clean the data to get more infrastructure or the biover have if uh, stretch hard to be to visible on the map. Uh, we involved some of the volunteer to do the, you know, uh, 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 recording or all the uh, all the road network because we use some of the open source uh, road network uh, or maybe information from the uh, open stream mass, but that was not updated everywhere. So we have to use different methodology uh, to get more updated information. But nowadays uh, we also start to see there is a, a, a geos intelligence or yet yeah, your intelligence is already there. Nowadays they are using artificial intelligence. Uh, applying to the geospatial system. So in the places where we don't have any information or if we cannot send the people to the location, we don't need to spend time uh, in some location. You can start to instruct the GIS technology to uh, to uh, to uh, to get the you know, uh, population estimate by understanding the actual uh, uh, settlement location you can ask to estimate the population. You can get more information from that. So now if I have to do differently, maybe I will start to also combine both, uh, both practices to maybe use some other advanced technology to also replace some of the DDA process that will save some time. And also, you know, when you really have ground data, uh, you know, for example, your uh, administrative uh, boundary and the actual boundary and the administrative 
uh, boundary in some country may be relevant, but in Myanmar it was relevant. The actual boundary and the paper boundary, they are not much same and we have some problem. And uh, this one location we identify from one administrative area fall into another administrative area in the paper. So it was there was a challenge to understand and determine this area belong to which administrative site. So this type of actual uh, uh, actual ground data and the paper data from the administration side does not match, and we we have we have a struggle how to allocate this map area and a wet health facility or and a wet administrative area to provide their uh, services. So that type of things also we observe. Um, another one is the sometimes uh, we do not have a very uh, uh, goods and up to date satellite imagery. Maybe nowadays it might have improved with the availability of the open source and maybe some donor community. They invest a lot to produce better quality GIS map. At that time, we have we also struggled to get a better GIS satellite map. Um, and also in due course of the time, we also realized if we produce paper map for all the health facility, we preprint and we use that may, and we update every year that will not be efficient. So we also found that we may need to use and migrate into the GIS uh, sub, software in the tablet for the health worker and they can use it, update it. So that was some of the uh, inception and the idea we, we start to come in. Yeah, so for the most of the advantages, I think I have already covered. So we were able to start to use the advanced technology on top of the conventional method. And, and also uh, the health system overall, they were also benefiting from the health facility uh, master list, community master list, because they are the same population and they are the same health worker and health facility, they are serving the, those populations. So, other programs like TB, malaria, HIV, that they also have benefit to get this information. In for a same instant, one to two places we have this. Yeah. So, so I think that's the same similar uh, 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 challenges. Only uh, one one line I will pick up that is uh, we we it took time for us if we use the similar. Uh, 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 pro approach, it will take time to reach nationwide. So we need to use some event technology to improve better. Uh, maybe that technology can help for some sensitive area. You don't need to send people. You can get those information and, and, and advice. Next slide, please. Yeah, that's the last slide, I promise. So so the, the process we practice in Myanmar from the traditional paper map to the, uh, the, the, the skill micro plan map, from the jazz uh, the uh, assistant, and also uh, one big mask you will see in the uh, picture below uh, that health worker can use from the tablet or the map, and he can better understand his location by understanding it uh, all the boundary communities and have a vaccination post. So this was uh, uh, a, a very good uh, uh, in, uh, initiative, and it have a lot, and also. I think with the technology changes, those challenges may be able to improve and we can better use it and health worker may be sensitized better and the health system, we need to also advocate and uh, orient and educate so that they have a buy-in and they can use it. So that's my sharing and discussion uh, for all and thanks so much for your patience and attention. Thank you, Ney, uh, for that presentation and I think your comments on the, how technology has changed will lead us well into this presentation by, by Chizenga, who is uh, related to more recent applications. Uh, so uh, Chizenga uh, is uh, Abel Musuka, is a technical consultant for Grid3, working with GIS and data analytics. Um, and uh, aside from working with Grid3, he has uh, worked as the in the National Space data infrastructure for the Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources of Zambia. Um, over to you, Chizenga, with the pledge to try to, to stay within the 10 minutes to give time for Q&A. Thank you. All right. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Rocco, and uh, thank you uh, for everyone for making it. So uh, without going much into the details, uh, some of them have already been presented. This is just a use case from the Zambia's application of um, geospatial solutions to, to uh, support micro planning efforts. So we worked with the Ministry of Lands as grid three, uh, Ministry of Health as grid three uh, to support them in the 
the unit that is responsible for vaccination, which is uh, uh, EPI. So next slide, please. Um, this is just a snapshot of what we are going to go through. Uh, next slide. Okay. Yes, so the, in, a, in a nutshell, the Zambian government set a target of 70% uh, of the eligible population to be vaccinated since the time we started rolling out the, the vaccines. So the time that 70% mark was being set, we were talking of the eligible age of 18 years and above. And then uh, that one uh, changed over the next uh, couple of months with the introduction of Pfizer which now widened our reach to 12 years uh, and above. So the initial target was to meet the 70% by 30th uh, June, 2022. Uh, this was based on the background that we had missed a 40% target that we had set at the, at the end of um, December, 2021 as a country. So the micro planning uh, workshops or trainings came into play to speed up uh, the vaccination uh, campaign. Uh, next slide, please. All right, in terms of the, the micro planning uh, components itself, uh, we're not going into details. I think uh, Rocco did give an introduction of the, um, the red rec uh, strategy, reach every district, reach every child in terms of the components that are involved in there, in terms of planning through all the way through to uh, supervision and uh, budgeting. Uh, for the training process in specific, uh, we did uh, include EPI, which is the Minister of Health in this regard as grid three, to identify priority centers targeted for micro planning trainings. Because the, the rollout of the micro planning trainings was uh, funding based. So there was an, a need to identify the, 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 the top targets. And then we conducted a quantitative analysis of uh, available immunization data at the time, missing those targets that I've already talked about was the platform to see the rates that we were and where the country needed to be. Uh, the micro planning process was also looking to uh, identify the barriers and at the same time solutions to, to this problem in access and utilization of the vaccines. And uh, at the end of the workshops, we would, uh, at the end of it, we would consolidate um, these plans, the micro planning uh, uh, templates that were filled in by health facilities and then aggregate them to the administrative boundary level of district. And then they are submitted to the national office. Uh, next slide, please. So our, our development of maps was based on the, the template that the Minister of Health was using, which was an Excel document that was looking for specific information in terms of the target population, where they are, how they're distributed, how far they are from the health facility, and what is the demographics? What are the problems on the ground? What is the region, main language, and so on and so forth. So we use these parameters to customize uh, maps, uh, micro planning maps to fit the needs of this uh, template, as you, you are going to see later. Uh, next slide, please. In terms of challenges, um, the vaccination campaign in Zambia came with its own challenges. The first one mainly was that this was a new target age group than the one that the ones that EPI was normally used to. Uh, things like um, HPV, things like polio and measles were like routine. They knew the, the standard age group and they were used to doing this every now and again. But when COVID came, you know, it came with a new target age group and a new message. And there was that uh, breaking that barrier of um, community engagement and uh, risk communication to go beyond the population and be, them being receptive to the vaccine uh, picture also based on uh, issues of um, information surrounding vaccination. So it was a bit of a challenge and uh, there was uh, some hesitancy experienced. Aside that, there was uh, inadequate funding for vaccine deployment. 
when he just came, he, the government wasn't ready. Uh, not all the countries, rather, most of the countries were not ready. So it had to take uh, a lot of planning and uh, sourcing of funding to uh, deploy the vaccines. Uh, we also experienced slow uptake of the COVID vaccines uh, due to inadequate service delivery points, uh, which was also common. Uh, we had weak and passive uh, IFE uh, surveillance system, which is just the adverse effects following immunization. These were not really established at the point when we're trying to break in. There was limitation of data entry staff for service delivery points. And then uh, we also had, uh, lastly, we also had some uh, limited GIS capacity at the EPI. So in, in supporting EPI with planning in the maps uh, came with uh, working with uh, people that were not GIS personnel but they were eager to learn how GIS could be uh, used to ease their work. So that just spoke to the, also the limit. Next slide, please. In terms of our spatial data solutions, uh, we developed the maps and were able to print uh, for all the 116 uh, districts in the country. Uh, these maps were uh, developed based on the template, as Elia uh, said, and they were tailored to fit uh, EPI's needs. And then uh, we used the core geospatial layers uh, that are needed on the ground for ease of, of, of understanding for the healthcare workers. We added things like uh, the population catchment boundaries, um, we, we had the population estimates rather, through the, I think uh, the previous speaker spoke of uh, population uh, settlement extents. So we did add some settlement extents to inform where people were clustered and not just how many, uh, where they were clustered, but how many they were and how many of a certain age group uh, were still located there. And we also added some key infrastructure facilities like uh, schools, uh, we, we added, um, also uh, churches, because you find that uh, the EPI and the way the COVID vaccination or the vaccination program itself is run, you find that the ministry uses some of these already established uh, infrastructure as uh, vaccine uh, distribution points or to give out vaccines. Uh, next slide, please. Yes, uh, in terms of the, the final product, this is a scope of um, a district map for one of the districts in Muchinga province of Zambia. And it speaks to the division uh, broken down further in, in the terms of uh, the catchment boundaries for the health facilities. So each health facility is defined a boundary in which they save uh, a certain population. So we created these maps and attached uh, settlement extents that speak to where people are and how far they are from the facility. So we, we didn't use travel time, we use just distance based on the, uh, the normal routes of, of travel. So for this, we, we broke it down into the distance of five kilometer, five to 10 kilometer and 10 kilometers. And uh, the healthcare workers were able to see this information and were able to interpret it in a way that they would know where their, um, their largest uh, missed population is, is sitting and how they could set up uh, mobile uh, outreach points. And we also added um, the, the population on the, in terms of the age groups, uh, 12 to 17, 18 to 64, and those that were above 65 because you find that sometimes the government was targeting people that are more susceptible to, to the effects of COVID-19, like the vulnerable uh, population of the uh, senior uh, citizens. In the maps, we also added uh, for use in other features, we added, added populations of children aged under one and uh, under five and females uh, 15 to, to 49, so that it could also inform other immunization initiatives. Uh, next slide, please. This is a, now a lower level map, uh, more detailed. It goes down to the catchment level, what's really going on inside the catchment. 
So in this map, we would show the, the catchment boundary of a facility, and then we would show the population of the facility based on those color codes to show how far people are. And those that are in green, those speaks to five kilometer, and yellow speaks to the next stage, and uh, pink speaks to the, the furthest from the facility. So health, healthcare workers were able to use these maps to identify the, the problems within their catchment and also issues of under, under calculating or rather under uh, counting or, or over counting due to people at near the border uh, areas of the catchment jumping over to go to the near, nearby facility because it's, it's nearer to them in the practical sense than the one that is normally designated to them. So that this would inform um, planning for resources when the health, uh, health facilities are planning. They will know which immediate uh, population is coming as a threat. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Okay, thank you. In, the, in, the, in terms of map distribution, we just went around the country, supported the EPI uh, national officers to implement these trainings on the ground and distributed uh, maps in, both in PDF as well as uh, hard copy. We distributed that, those large, uh, in the picture above, those are A0 maps printed on PVC paper such that uh, healthcare workers were able to use them, fold them, they could get soaked, but they would not get destroyed. And uh, at the end of the phase one of this uh, micro planning workshops, we, we had actually reached out to uh, over 3000 healthcare workers cutting across 71 districts that represented 1,669 health, uh, health facilities. Next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, in terms of further support to the EPI, BRID3 is uh, working on the, another initiative that informs um, the best place sites where people can put a vaccination point. Instead of in the first case where we'll, we'll just, you know, show them where the people are distributed, we, would, we added a, an, another tool that we're working on in the next stage right now, it's ongoing where they can identify the best place site to put a vaccination point and how many people it would fetch them within the radius of uh, five uh, kilometers, for example. Uh, next slide, please. So this is just a snapshot of the, the, the dashboard that speaks to the previous slide. It just gives the picture of um, the best place site for uh, for a vaccination point, you know, they can't use just facilities. Sometimes they, they need to go somewhere, set up a tent. And even if they, they go in an area where they can't set up a tent, they would, be, they would like to identify already existing features like a nearby school and how far that school is or how far that church is so that it can be used uh, to catch that population. So this um, analysis focuses on the on arranging these optimized sites for vaccination by rank uh, in order of the one that will get you the largest number, looking at uh, prioritizing purposes and, and budgetary uh, needs. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. In terms of, uh, sorry, the previous slide. In terms of the um, outcomes and lessons learned, uh, it, it was really uh, practical and uh, we were able to determine the fixed, through th this effort, the maps were able to determine uh, the, the fixed strategy, outreach or mobile that could be used in the practical situation. Then there was an ability for the healthcare workers to clearly see the delineation of their service area points and also see the immediate population that is in close by to them from the other catchments. Uh, then the, this, the maps inform the better resource allocation for transport costs because the healthcare workers were able to use the maps to physically calculate uh, distance on the maps and then uh, input it in the budgeting cost for uh, transportation. 
there was a factor that was given for calculation calculating of uh, of, of fuel uh, for budget needs for outreach programs. Then uh, districts who, who received training had also experienced an increase in vaccination rates. We we spoke of uh, an example of Kafue district, which surpassed the national target of 77% after receiving the training in February. You'll find that by the time we were in in December, at the end of December 2021, the vaccination uh, rate was very low nationwide, but uh, through the campaign mid of the year 2022, we saw um, over double of the um, four times the, the number that we had covered just in 2021. So uh, the O exercise, um, the efforts of EPI and, and the support of grid three and other partners uh, it greatly improved the, the vaccination uh, stage that we have reached at as a country now. Uh, next slide, please. In terms of lessons learned, I will not uh, speak in too, too much details in bearing, bearing the time, but the micro planning uh, trainings ensured facilities were able to establish a baseline by developing health facility level micro plans. Previously, uh, a lot of facilities did not have catchment level micro plans. The, the, the micro planning was done from top, uh, top down where vaccines were just distributed based on what was coming in. But this approach changed the, 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 the strategy where the, the top uh, sector of Ministry of Health planning was waiting from the input from the facilities in terms of what were the actual needs and the problems on the ground. Then uh, GIS trainings are also being offered to support the Ministry of, of uh, Health, the EPI office. And then uh, we also have done some training of trainers just to uh, add that uh, capacity within EPI for them to be able to transfer the knowledge to uh, other personnel bearing in mind the, the narrow uh, human resource that can be there on the m and &E level. And then uh, we printed maps for all the district levels, but we had a challenge with health healthcare uh, level, health facility level maps, where we distributed them as PDFs, but for all the districts, we printed them in, in, in A0. And then um, there's all, also continued need for uh, training for all the API need, uh, staff as, as, as time passes. Uh, next slide, please. In terms of uh, the remaining challenges, uh, we have, as Elia said, there's limited institutional capacity within Ministry of Health for, for, for GIS specifically. And then there's discrepancies between uh, the health facility headcounts and, and the populations of grade three bottom up uh, that was used and the top down census projection that was used. Uh, so going forward, I think uh, in terms of population, the current census that is being conducted in Zambia will sort out most of that problem. And uh, we look to to get uh, better in terms of more latest uh, statistics of census. Then the EPI team does not have designated GIS staff. I already talked about this one. So we, we are providing support as grid three in terms of GIS and the other partners also that are providing uh, support to, to the EPI. Then there's a large number of facilities that require to be trained and uh, this limit of staff between um, how many staff can be available from grade three uh, to be practically on the ground. Then uh, also further trainings that are required are remaining challenges. Uh, next slide, please. So opportunities uh, of use of this data beyond COVID-19. Uh, next slide, I spoke of uh, the use in polio campaign because of those target age groups that we have we put in our grade three maps. There's evidence that uh, some facilities already started using them to start interpreting what they're expecting in terms of statistics on the ground to, to do with these other routine immunizations. And then um, there's also targeted campaigns and outbreak response. Just that preparation of, of other things is um, another potential of uh, how the maps can be used uh, beyond COVID-19. Uh, next slide, please. 
Thank you. Uh, so this is basically how you can reach us. And uh, thank you for listening. Uh, there's, there's, if you need further follow up, the emails are, are there and the website for Greece 3. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Chisanga and uh, Nai and uh, Roko. Uh, so we are just about time and uh, I would uh, like you to take the opportunity uh, to address quickly some questions that came up uh, in the uh, in the chat. Uh, so uh, one question uh, from uh, uh, Lillian. Uh, was about how do we collect the information in general? Uh, and a follow-up question from uh, Marco, which has been partially answered, is how do you monitor the cold chain equipment? And um, uh, there are many more details at play here. Uh, so I'm pretty sure that if you cannot answer the question in length uh, during this uh, webinar, uh, we will uh, provide you with some material uh, that will help address those questions. But quickly, uh, Roko, Nai, or Chisenga, if you want to address the question around data collection uh, and equipment monitoring for cold chain, uh, the cold chain use case. Over. And, and Nai, would you want to go first or? Okay, uh, thank you so much. Uh, quickly to the data collection. Um, yeah, there were data collection were two part, two questions where I would combine it. So we didn't use existing technology just to extra, uh, uh, you, you, uh, to locate from the, you know, uh, remotely from the, um, the GIS map, but we use our health worker who know the location, ask them to go to those location and collect the health facility uh, information, community information. Okay, so they are the one who were trained and go and collect, so they get hands-on information about the locality. Because that we have an opportunity. But two, they use uh, their simple um, um, and a mobile, the smart mobile or the tablet to collect the geospatial information, just the uh, uh, the point information or the coordinates. But uh, after cutting those information to to develop the boundary. Uh, we utilize a health manager or some IT help, IT uh, friendly health worker to do the boundary mapping using all the health worker from the locality to tell and to to look at the uh, geography and to divide the boundary according to their knowledge and involving the local authority. So that that's the method we do. Number two, quickly for the code chain. Yes, we collect the information about point location or the coaching equipment in the uh, from the similar type of initiative, and we uh, interpret into the map with the you know uh, with the you know uh, difference uh, analysis. But regarding the temperature data, because we cannot, yeah, there is an option if you monitor if you add the the temperature data is possible in the existing database, but. Normally, uh, for this uh, real-time temperature monitoring, we use uh, a lot of uh, temperature, remote temperature monitoring devices that is also available, and the UNICEF pre-qualified. There are four, three to four devices that you can uh, link to the geospatial information or whatever database you have that they can produce the temperature data and that you can make it visible through the map or maybe uh, 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 the web page. So there are different uh, technology for the code chain, but you can integrate, but some places, some area you cannot integrate. So that's my contribution. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Naya. Uh, so let's uh, uh, give a chance uh, for one additional question from the colleagues. Feel free to raise your hand and we also speak Spanish if you want to ask your question in Spanish. Over. If no um, additional question, yeah, Roko, do you want to come in? Oh yeah, I was, I was saying I just wanted to add oh, on. Um, yes, yes. Uh, for us, uh, the, 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 luckily the grid three in Zambia was incorporated through uh, the NSDI project, which sits under the Ministry of Lands. So the NSDI project was responsible for co collecting key geospatial information data sets. So you'll find that we already had the administrative boundaries 
and we all the project also collected um, health facilities it collected the uh, the other data sets from different stakeholders that are part of the nsdi and in the maps we detailed the source of the information and uh, all the related metadata that supports what is in there so data collection was was um, was handled in that way and then uh, for the code chain the the officers only filled in this information through the 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 template, the microplanning template. Uh, prior to them being trained, they will be uh, informed on when the training is happening and what information they need to bring to the to the uh, the training, such as uh, the details of the fridge that they are using to store the vaccines or to carry them, because you find that some facilities would not have a storage uh, vaccine uh, storage. Uh, chain but then they would uh, use the nearby facility so that was specified uh, at a training level yes thank you thank you so much Isanga, for that uh, additional information um colleagues feel free to send any additional question you may have uh and uh, i omitted to mention at the beginning of this call uh, this call was also made possible uh, because of the coordination of uh, Emily Nicholson, who is a uh, uh, LAC region main focal point uh, for digital health. Uh, and she couldn't join this call because uh, she is flying right now to arrive in Panama. Uh, she did put uh, uh, out uh, some nice uh, short guidance on how to uh, uh, include digital health solution uh, for the COVID delivery, COVAX delivery support, COVID delivery support, sorry, uh, CDS funding round three. Uh, and we will also be sharing that presentation alongside uh, the material for this presentation. And uh, uh, the funny thing is that this is a presentation about uh, uh, geographical information system, and we were able to actually bring four continents because I think we have people sitting on four continents right now, Europe, uh, East Asia, uh, <laughs> um, Africa and, and Latin America. Uh, so uh, this uh, this was a great coordination. Uh, thank you all for uh, the time. Uh, and uh, we are glad that uh, we were able to have this discussion in the Latin America and Caribbean region, uh, and we can keep this material and we can build on top of this material. Um, thank you again, Roko. Uh, thank you, Tisenga and Nai. Thank you to the health team uh, that facilitated this uh, uh, webinar, uh, and thank you to all the colleagues for joining us. Any last words, Roko? No, thank you, Masamba, for your for hosting us, and uh, it was a pleasure. Thank you so much. Bye -bye. All right, colleagues, we'll be sharing the recording and the material soon. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.